Welcome to Computing Principles, where we'll learn about well, computers. And the first topic that we're going to discuss will be about what the computer will actually do. Now, the computer is a very simplistic device. Of course, it is advanced. It can do many, many things. But essentially, what it does is it will accept input of some kind using some kind of input device. For example, we have the keyboard. Not the best drawing of a keyboard, but you get it, right? And a mouse. These are input devices. Using the input devices, we can say something to the computer in which we will actually talk to the processing circuitry of the computer, which consists of the central processing unit. You might or might not know of that. A lot of people use CPU to refer to that main box that house everything that the computer would actually use. The CPU is actually the central processing unit and otherwise known as a processor or microprocessor. And you might have heard of this particular name, it's called Intel, uh, Intel Inside Core i5 and whatnot. Right? So this is a brand of, of a processor. It will actually calculate and determine what needs to be done next. And then we have the memory. What is the memory? A mem the, the memory of the computer is actually a space inside the computer that we use to store whatever things we are currently running on the computer. For example, when you switch on your computer for the first time, what happens is that you will have your operating system. You will get to see, for example, Windows appearing on the screen. When that happens, in reality, Windows from the storage will get to the memory. Then it can do its thing. You know what I'm saying? Meaning to say that then you have Windows and Windows will do lots of different things. For example, Windows will display time. Windows will give you your icons that you have on your desktop. Right? So this is done by Windows. And depending on what kind of software that we have inside the computer memory, when you give some kind of an input, the CPU has to calculate and process what needs to be done. Sometimes it will go to the storage and get something. Sometimes it will just say to the software, hey, you know what? This user just said something and I know something needs to be done. Right? The software will supply some kind of information or other data and the CPU will calculate and give it out to the output device. You might or might know what an output device is. Or like the thing that you know, right? So for example, a monitor is an output device. No, I think my drawing is getting better, don't you think? Um, and we also have speakers. These are all output devices. Now, you imagine having different kinds of software inside your memory. Let's say, for example, you have Microsoft Word. Right? Now, when you have Microsoft Word inside your memory, and it is the kind of application that you see on your monitor, right? That, oh, Microsoft Word. Yeah, this is it. Right? So when that happens, when, say, for example, you type A, what happens? What happens is that on your screen, with Microsoft Word on your screen, you will see A. But, 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 if you have another software inside your memory, let's say you have a game, and this game is called Zombie Shoot, right? Where you, well, shoot zombie, right? And when you have this, and you imagine I know you've played all sorts of games, but what happens when you type ASDW? Basically, you'll be, you'll be moving left, right, or backwards, or forwards. That happens with the game. The same kind of input, which is A, with regards to this different software inside the memory, will yield or will get you different kind of output. Right? Okay. Um, 
Another example, let's say uh, you are going and using Google Chrome. What's the, what's the icon of Google Chrome? Is it something like that? It's, uh, it looks somewhat similar to that, right? It's like a, a, a circle kind of thing. In Google Chrome, for example, when or if you type A, what happens is that sometimes in your address bar, HTTP something, right? A list of website beginning with the letter A might appear. That might be one thing. Then again, we can also combine A, control A. What happens? What happens is that whatever is inside the website or whatever is on your screen might be highlighted because control A means select all, right? So with the same kind of input, maybe with an addition of another button, right? You are actually telling the processing circuitry that you want something and the processing circuitry will actually well, process right so that you get some kind of an output right and every now and then you will store it sometimes you store it by saying hey i want to save meaning you just click on save or there's a save button or control s or something or sometimes the software which is inside your memory will periodically save things. Let's say, for example, if you're visiting a website, right? you know that once you've visited a website, unless you're using incognito mode or, or uh, save mode, whatever you call it, private mode or whatever, unless you're using, if you're using those modes, this won't happen. If you're using the regular mode, what happens is that the software, which is the web browser, will actually store which website you went to as part of its history. Meaning to say that somewhere inside your computer, it is being stored. And this is basically what the computer does. I hope it's okay for me to erase this because we are actually getting to the point now, um, which is what a computer will actually do. The computer is actually a device that handles or rather that carries out the input processing output and storage storage uh, process otherwise known as the information processing cycle and that is to we'll continue this input processing output and storage thing that the computer does what is that input processing output and storage right input processing let's get rid of this intel thingy and write processor here on the other hand right processing uh, I hope you don't mind my G it looks like that it's looks like a number eight without the top part right don't judge do not judge um, we have processing and then we have output and then we have storage now earlier we talked about the same kind of input depending on what kind of software you have inside your memory might or can result in a different kind of output right? for example hopefully you still remember if it's microsoft word you will get the letter a if it's a game you might get the main character moving to the right or left or backwards or forwards whereas yeah, I, I just like switched on a light. <laughs> anyway, right? Uh, this is to say that actually in reality, this input process using those input devices that I drew earlier but I've erased because I'm embarrassed with my drawing, right? Um, let's say the keyboard or the mouse, right? Um, will get you well, technically speaking, it gets you nothing. I mean, imagine you put a, some, some keyboard keys on people and then you press them. Nothing will happen. Uh, in reality, these are what we call electronic devices. And it is a part of the computer which we'll call the hardware, right? Physical parts that we can touch. Now, with regards to the keyboard, when you type or press the buttons, what happens is that there will be some kind of electrical impulse. It's like, imagine <laughs> something like that, right? Uh, maybe not something like that. Okay, now, electrical impulses 
things that we cannot really understand, right? Otherwise known as data is a collection of things or a result of circumstances of the user doing something in order to communicate with the computer. It's like the user is saying something right, through these different devices and the user is sending what we call data, right? Um, which is technically series of, um, how do I say, um, unstructured information. It's just random electrical impulses or random numbers and, and whatnot. Now, using these electrical impulses, you send something to the processing circuitry. And the CPU will figure out what needs to be done and what kind of output needs to go out, like I said earlier, based on the kind of software which is currently residing inside the memory or being loaded to the memory. Now, having figured that out, some kind of an output will be seen or heard or felt. And in the case of, say, Microsoft Word, if you press the button A on your keyboard, you will get the letter A on your monitor. And the letter A is something that humans can understand. Meaning, through this process, input processing, output and storage, we will get data from the user using input devices getting processed and turning into information. So the information processing cycle is a combination of activities that the computer is capable of doing in order to produce information that we humans, we humans can understand. For example, letter A or the movement of a character in the game, these are all um, information that we can understand. For example, the character is moving to the right, then you know that maybe he's hiding from a zombie or going to shoot a zombie which is on his left or something. Right? And that is the information processing cycle. Okay. okay, next is the processing circuitry. It consists of the central processing unit which is this very, very fast circuitry inside your computer. For example, I know if you know of this, but sometimes you'll see processor and it says giga, gigahertz, something hertz, right? Let's say um, 2.0 gigahertz. What does that mean? What does hertz mean? Hertz means per second or second neg over negative one, second negative to power of negative one, sorry. Right? Per second, that means, let's say I can do this twice per second. That means my frequency is two hertz. In the case of the computer, having a certain processor with the speed of two gigahertz, that means it can do it two times per second. No, not really. G here also has some kind of a meaning, right? Giga. Giga is a multiple of a certain number, right? For example, you might be familiar with the term milli. Is it M-I double L or one L? Millimeter, for example, means one over a thousand or centimeter, one over a hundred, or kilometer, which means times one thousand, right? And then we have mega. Maybe you're not yet familiar with the term mega, but mega means times a million, right? And so giga means times Let's just write this here, yeah. 1,000, 1 million, followed by 6 uh, zeros. And by now, you should 
read the trend already where giga is one step above mega so it's one billion so whatever the computer is doing or rather whatever the central processing unit is doing it is doing really quickly right it is doing it up to two billion times per second surprising not really pretty surprising actually that means it can calculate really quickly right whatever it is doing so whenever you type e for example this is a complicated process actually from electrical impulse it needs to understand what kind of software is inside the memory then it needs to understand to figure out this electrical impulse should be what and then what kind of output should i give so that you get some kind of an output it's a very complicated process actually lots of things need to be done but because the cpu is very fast when you type a you don't have to wait two weeks you immediately get your a on your screen that is uh, processing that turns data into information and every now and then you say you know what I'm done for today's work and you would want to save it so that is storage and that is the information processing cycle and that is something that the computer does by way of having these things called the hardware and the software